In this video, we're going to learn about data classes, which are one of the new features added in Python 3.7 in the standard library. Data classes are a lot like regular classes, but as the name implies, they reduce boilerplate code when you have a class that's mostly about storing or keeping track of state uh, with not that much logic. So to motivate uh, the use of data classes, first we'll make a regular class uh, that keeps track of some account details. Here we have a simple account class and we have two methods implemented. We have dunder init implemented that takes uh, two variables that it stores as fields, a name, which is a string and amount, which is a float. And if you haven't seen this syntax before, where there is a colon after the variable name and then the type, those are Python's optional type annotations. So that's our dunder in it. And then the other method that we've implemented is dunder wrapper that provides a nice string representation for, uh, for example, debugging. And so that's just going to return a string that is the name of the class, as well as uh, the variables uh, to instantiate it once again. Okay, so down here, we're just instantiating uh, an instance of this account class, and then we're printing its string representation. Okay, so there we go. It's printed uh, our nice string representation here. Okay, so how would data classes help us with this uh, class? So let's give it a try. So the first thing to do is we have to import a special decorator from the Python standard library. So we'll do our import from data classes. We'll import data class. Data class is the decorator that we put on the class that we want to be uh, a data class, as you can imagine. And then what our data class is going to do is it's going to generate both these two methods and additional methods, um, if we like. So what we first need to do is remove this and provide our fields as uh, class variables. So if we recall, we had a name that was a stir and we had an amount uh, that was a float. And with this, we should be able to once again, have a nice string representation because the data class has implemented both dunder in it. As you can see, we're able to instantiate a class and it's implemented a nice string representation for us. So that's quite cool. It's, you know, much less lines of code. At this point, you might be wondering, well, what if I want to customize dunder wrapper? Um, and, and that's fine. You can implement wrapper yourself. Um, just like this, boom, and your implementation will be used. Uh, the data class won't generate wrapper for you. You can also pass parameters to the data class decorator in order to specify which Dunder methods are generated. So maybe for some reason you don't want wrapper implemented at all, and that's fine. You can specify that by passing wrapper equals false. And then as you can see, there is no nice string representation for this object. Here we can see the different parameters that are possible uh, to pass to the data class decorator. And these denote which dunder methods are implemented. So as you can see, init, wrapper, and eq uh, are all implemented by default. There's also an order option, which implements uh, some of the additional rich comparison operators by default, that is false. Uh, there is another option called unsafe hash that determines whether or not Dunder hash is implemented. And then there's another option called frozen uh, that we'll talk a little bit more about. As it stands right now, let's get rid of our uh, repr equals false. So we have a nice repr again. Um, as it stands right now, these instances that are created are mutable. So if I wanted to set a count to 15, that's completely fine. I can do that. What the frozen option uh, that we just saw enables to do is to make these instances effectively immutable. So maybe I want to explicitly disallow the developer from mutating any of these uh, fields. Now, when the developer tries to set amount, 
what they get is this exception, a data class is frozen instance error. So that's a kind of cool uh, option that is enabled by data class using this frozen uh, field. So a final useful thing to know is that the dunder init method that the data class generates calls a special function called dunder post init. So if we have any uh, little logic that we want to run at the end of init, we can add that to this function post init. So I'll just uh, print a string so that we know it's running. And now once we instantiate our account instance, we see that that logic in post in it runs. In summary, we went through a whirlwind tour of data classes. We motivated when data classes can be used to reduce boilerplate code. We showed how to define them using the data class decorator, providing fields as class variables. We showed how to customize the generated methods using the data class decorator's optional parameters like rep equals true. We also showed how to make immutable instances using frozen equals true. And finally, we showed where to put custom init logic in Dunder post init. I hope this was useful and thank you for watching.